basically yeah. SpongeBob SquarePants, where Patrick realized what starfish are supposed to do. What does that mean? <laughs> he was supposed to he do? was eating everybody in Bikini Bottom. Oh, um, and like what are you talking about? There was some like SpongeBob? really messed up, some really messed up SpongeBob like fan SpongeBob? art comic strip what? where oh SpongeBob God. like remembered what he was. Like Spon uh, SpongeBob, I mean, Squidward remembered <laughs> that he was a starfish and started eating SpongeBob. I guess I don't know anybody enough about else. Starfish, you just yeah, do starfish. Yeah, I, or maybe I everything. don't know enough about the continuity and lore of SpongeBob. <laughs> I don't think the but, continuity and lore of SpongeBob has anything to do know. with it. I think it's I just know, a, a, I, it's just some. It's just like some really twisted, like Japanese horror inspired comic book. And all I could think, and like, oh, and so it wasn't an actual. It was like a, it was, a, no, no, it no, was no, like no. a fan, it was like a fan made thing, no. but it was like that, uh, uh, Jin Oto or whatever his name is, that really yeah. horror comics and uh, manga guy, horror uh, comics manga guy. Yeah, <laughs> all I could think, yeah, was like, like that made I, sense. All I could think was like, uh, you know, Patrick. Uh, saying stuff to SpongeBob, like you know, Pinhead might say something to somebody in Hellraiser, like, "Oh, the sights you'll see, SpongeBob." <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> I'm like, oh. what? Because <laughs> Patrick was like, "There's some weird stuff on the internet, man." You There's just, some weird, you just you're right. Start There's some weird stuff Reddit. going on right now on this show that is on the <laughs> <I> internet. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got three comics and news and stuff because I ain't got ah, shit. Man, I, got I only got I only got two this week. Ooh, two. Oh. It was Slim Pickens. It's even slimmer. It was Slim week. Pickens. The other ones I don't really want to talk. I mean, I can pick a third one if we want to talk you about to. that you shitty. You have to pick a third one. Pick if you want, if you want to like talk a... about that shit twist in Batman. No. Did you read Empire? Avengers? No, I didn't read Empire. I did not. not great too. It was not that great too. I uh, did not. Are you actually, about the designer twist. Yeah. Oh, we can shit all over that if you want. That kind of went the way I. Like, that kind of went. I mean, or oh, whatever. Dave's like, oh yeah, I called it. It was Joker zombie the whole fucking time. You, I knew it. You liar. No I one kinda, knew that. That's stupid and dumb, and no one would have ever called that in a million years. I, well, I wasn't expecting a zombie, but I did yes, expect you the were. Joker That's to be behind said. it. <laughs> I was expecting. Oh sure, the, Joker's. Well, they kind of telegraphed it leading into Joker War. I know, but, know? It was, but I wasn't expecting like him to reanimate a corpse and all that. It's kind of freaky. Well, they dude. didn't explain how that whole thing worked either. Like, how how did that we'll designer it. zombie thing work? We'll talk about it because it's unimportant. Okay, we'll talk about it. Anything else, David? You got three books? I got We're three not books. Quite live yet? We got another. I don't know. I got three books, and none of them are Marvel. Oh, Big Willie already mouthing off in the chat. Uh, Share the show out, Big Willie. Get some folks up in here, brother. Somebody said, "Dang" in there. I only Thanks. see two people. Stay safe, homie. Michael Keaton is my favorite bat actor to play Batman. We're going to talk about that. Yes, we That's are going to talk about that. Pre-show exclusive comment. Pre-show exclusive <laughs> comment. All right, let's just... Here, I'll play the video. I think I've got... I think this is it. The video that hinges this whole show. Shut up. I worked really hard on this, jerk. <laughs> I didn't. Man. <laughs> I didn't, really. Has had an animation and everything. Garbage. Some people will watch anything, Scarlet. So G.I. Joe! <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad you mastered PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm really good at PowerPoint. Freaking theme song's still dope as hell. Yeah, dude. I love it. My boy Adam did that. Not this Adam, a different Adam. Greetings, geeks. Welcome back to this Geek in Comics. Outright geekeries. Comic book shit talk show. Comic book shit talk show! Looks like the Sergeant Slaughter version. <laughs> Did you see that Sergeant Slaughter action figure I posted he, the other day? He has no lower jaw. No, I didn't. Yeah, he's got like his dentures are out. That's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it's weird. Oh, it's, it's weird. I'm anyway, Sergeant Slaughter. I'm Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> Do it. Keep doing it because that does that is a really good impression of Sergeant Slaughter without his teeth. Go, David, aka David, everyone. Ah, welcome to our regular shit talk. I'm Sergeant Slaughter. 
No, see, it, it got a weird Irish. No. Yeah, you <laughs> turned into a pirate at the end. You know, a pirate or the leprechaun. Something. All those little <laughs> bastards are always after me, Lucky Charms. Yeah. Anyway, I am your co host, Gomer. And with me, as always, uh, well, aka David, the man of a million voices. How's it going, brother? Oh, the things we'll have to show you, SpongeBob. I know. <laughs> if you're just joining us, you need to go back when we're done and listen to the live pre show because it was weird. And also, Adam Normal, what is up, dude? What's going on? Nothing much, man. Just squashed excited to his- shit talk on some comic squashed books, squashed all his family problems. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, okay. See, even the tone. Yeah. yeah. Why'd you have to remind me? I use this to escape my, my real life. Dude, I drank an entire bottle of scotch this weekend. Oh, had a very good time. I was up to like three o'clock and I went to get another drink, and my wife was like, you know, it's three o'clock. And I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> the party <started. laughs> The party is here. So I don't know what that's about. I'm watching. Were you, you doing anything while you were drinking? Did I do anything? You probably yeah, watched another you just movie. Drinking, drinking to drink. Uh, no, yeah, I was just drinking to get a buzz and drink. I, what, what do you mean doing anything? I mean, what? were you in a movie or thing? Yeah, or were well, you just like sitting there in a room alone drinking, staring? <laughs> yeah, at the, the last couple of times you've been you've been drinking, you've been like shit posting on uh Facebook. I was shit posting stupid movies on Facebook, but I don't know. I'm not really doing that. I wasn't really doing that. We watched Fried Green Tomatoes. Oh, okay, that movie's a little bit tougher to. Uh, Ah, uh, dude got hit by a train. I mean, what what are you supposed to say? It's kind of a depressing, terrible movie. It's always been I a watched, depressing, uh, terrible movie. I watched something earlier today. The Ooh. series or the old movie? <laughs> the old Wes nice. Craven movie. Oh, nice. yeah, with that the is, rubber suit and everything. That is nice. awesome. I love that yep, movie. Yep. Me too, man. Yep. It's Toxic TV. Avenger For too. Free. That's somewhere. Yep, yep. I've seen that is available. Where'd you find that? HBO Max. You got HBO Max. <laughs> no, no, no! I found it on Tubi. That free. Oh yeah, the they got all the Transformers thing. on there too, dude. Yeah, they you do. Watch TF. David, what do you got? What do you got going on? I don't oh. even know if you want to hear it after that pre-show. Oh, um, I had a couple of Kickstarters come due this week. Oh, nice! I love Kickstarters. Yeah. yeah. Um, What'd you get? Anything dope? Anything sweet? Anything? If you got a camera, you could show them off. But alas, I don't have. I I don't have them in physically. I, they they came due this week. Like, you know, the pledge is ended. Uh, one was called. I guess board, I don't know how Kickstarter works. Uh, uh, one was for a board game called Dinosaur 1944. Oh, weird. Um, okay. Which is, which is, it's, it, it's essentially zombie side with dinosaurs. Okay. Uh, and the other one was uh, some very large two inch uh, gelatinous cube dice. Oh, I saw those. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, gelatinous cube, jelly dice, gelatinous. I always got to watch out for those things. Awesome. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not handling the news this week. Oh no! David's doing the news. Uh oh. Are we ready? Do you want to get into the news? We can get into the news. Oh, why is it not? Sorry, guys. Let's let's try that again, y'all. It's <laughs> pretty dope. Though. I could do that over and over. I could do that over and over again. <laughs> William Pace, the Ron Jeremy is arrested. Doesn't that have to stem from some kind of allegations or something? Are we gonna? Uh, is that's the story we're starting with? <laughs> no, that's you something see, see, somebody in the chat. Ch- ch- no, I know saying. Big Willie. Is, oh my gosh! Oh, I see what he's saying. <laughs> Speaking of the Toxic Avenger, Ron Jeremy has had some things. That's not the news we're going to talk about. That's no, not that's news. not the news. That's not no, the we're news. not going to talk about Ron Jeremy. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Ron Jeremy. Is that what you think, Ron Jeremy? I've never heard the man speak. Is that how he speaks? <laughs> no. Uh, he's, uh, he's, I've heard is him that speak a in a few on? reality TV shows. He doesn't sound like that. He doesn't sound like that. <laughs> that's just what I imagine he... He, he, show, he was oh, on a reality oh, TV ladies. show with the, I'm the Ron Jeremy. Tammy oh, Faye oh, Baker, you know. It's weird. Terrible, terrible. Eric Estrada. Talk about... <laughs> Okay, so uh, news, David. You want me to play the intro again so you're back on point? No. Do it. No. Just show hey, off. Don't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch my thing again. Go ahead. Oh, now he's walking away. He's no. definitely just go away with the news. Ah. Uh, 
Today's top story, the U.S. has reported a record number of COVID cases. Oh, my gosh. Seriously? No. No, Ron Jeremy. No news that's going to make people hurt themselves. What did you expect when you let him eat the news? Oh, it did it again. Yeah, there's definitely a problem. Not great, man. Not great. <laughs> We're talking real news here. Real yeah. news. This is for real news. All right, let's, let's reset again. This is the last time we're resetting. TGIC news. This geek ah. in comics news. Nerd, nerd well, news. Yeah. David, come on, brother. Well, let's start off with with uh, some sad news here. We had uh, inker extraordinaire Joe's Sinat, Jolton Joe. He passed there away he Thursday uh, last week. He real was, life uh, hero. Yep, real life he, hero. He was 93. Uh, yeah, he's World best War known. Vet. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. He's best known for his uh, inking works with Jack Kirby on the Fantastic Four from basically yeah. like 1960 to like when uh, Kirby departed Fantastic Four yeah. in like 1970. And he remained on the Fantastic Four for at least another 11 years. Amazing. Uh, he actually continued to work for a very long time very inking long time. comics uh, up until about ni- uh, 2019 when he retired. Yep. He uh, did like right. the, the it was primarily the uh, Sunday strip for uh, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, the legend, but, man. Yes, really, legend. He really worked really with was. a lot of a lot of different artists. He remained like, on the Fantastic sorry. Four. Go ahead. It's just like just flashback in time. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You made me lose my train of thought. Thank you. He was a legend. Fantastic Four. Yeah. Fantastic Four. I was going to go into like all these other artists that he worked with. Like you Do know, it, bro. Do uh, we it. have a uh, uh, Joe. Do it. Go ahead. You've made, you've made me listening. lose my. You've made me lose it. This is why you don't let me do this. I thought you were taking notes. I did take notes, but if you keep interrupting me, oh, you've got to be prepared. Ah, John Romita, uh, John Buscema, uh, Bill S- uh, Sinsinski, uh Rich Bill Butler, Sinkowitz. 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 Okay. okay. Sorry. Uh, it's a hard name Rich, to pronounce. It is a hard name to pronounce. It's, um. Rich Buck, uh, Buckler and George Perez, to name a few. Uh, he he started Marvel um, when it was still like Timely Comics and Atlas Comics. That's right. Uh, right. Oh man! Pretty much yeah. he got way there way back and he, way he, back. He's one of the OGs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, lost the legend. That is lost sad. The legend. That is sad. News. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, he seems like he was a legend. All he did all those early Fantastic Fours. Unfortunately, that's kind of a blind spot in my comic book uh reading but you know since you should he passed, read this stuff, might give dude. me a chance well, to uh a, a reason to go and check it out you know well he and, did the uh, he was exactly. in the run that introduced like uh galactus right uh, the pretty Silver legendary Surfer. run like the uh, main yeah a lot a lot, yeah, of, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the mythos of the fantastic four was he was part he of and you know right. he was jack kirby helped the uh develop that um, that visual style for the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Chat's going off on you. I love it. Big Willie in there. He was the first appearance of Thor. Yep, first that appearance of nice. Thor. John Lee said you dropped your uh, your cue cards. Yep, I did. They're all but moving the on. Always sad when we lose somebody, uh, especially somebody so damn awesome. Uh huh. All right, next. Next. Oh, I should have done that. Next story, next story. Do we, we have want another to keep... story, or is that it? Is that all we got? That's, kind That's of a it. That's it. That's it. Let's kind go to our bummer. top three. <laughs> all right. Do we not so, want to talk about Michael Keaton? Uh, we're going to talk oh, about. We're Michael... getting there. Let, we're, oh, going we're, getting talk, there? we're going to talk about Michael Keaton, but let's let's. Oh, get... I thought you said we're going to go into our top three. No, no. <laughs> he's a liar. Oh, you're uh, a liar. Okay. We're going to go. Uh, we're going to get like the bad stuff out of the way first, and then we're going to have a little bit of eye wash with Michael Keaton. So, oh my gosh, just a whole bunch of like sexual misconduct allegations have just yeah the list sprung is up over longer. the list. Go ahead and <sighs> read off it's the crazy, list. It's crazy, man. Read off it's the out list. of control. It's, well, uh, I do some house repairs. <laughs> Gomer's uh, hot water heater is about to explode. So we're it's actually going to have explode. a real explosion show. But apparently uh, his hot water heater is right next to his computer for some reason. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are talking about it like it's an open bathtub where electronics can just fall in. No, it's a 
It's an appliance, just like any other, guys. <laughs> it'll blow the hole in your roof if it explodes, Gomer. Well, that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Uh, well, it we would had, be uh, interesting. We it's had a, we had uh, allegations from um, Taki Sonoma, Soma uh, against uh, Charles Brownstein, the executive director or former executive director of the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. Yeah, he's uh, out now. He's out. The The statement from the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund basically reads oh, I that, have that I think. Ha, uh, the CBLDF has accepted the resignation of Charles Brownstein as executive director effective immediately. Our organization exists to serve the comics community and the First Amendment, and we can't do that without an open and honest discourse. We believe our organization's management and staff should be representative of and responsive to the community they serve. I didn't have the right the right thing for that, so I had somebody else's statement. I guess the I. Uh, it's I fine. Had the actual, you want me to continue yeah. or? Yo, yo, you're great, man. Who else uh, is there? That's stupid and kind of been outed as as a dumbass. Um, we had uh Jason Latour. I Jason know I Latour. heard that one. There, he, there's allegations against Jason Latour. Uh, there's allegations, and it's very graphic against Scott Alley. Oh yeah, from over there, Dark Horse editor. Uh, I believe uh, Shauna Shauna Gore. She came forward with a very long uh, statement. Basically, uh, short version of it is is that she had been harassed sexually by uh, Scott for at least fourteen years, and it pretty much started with a van ride to That's a restaurant crazy. during a convention. And this guy uh, worked his way up pretty much through the ranks of dark horse, become like an executive producer publisher. And so this is, this is like he's a big out, fish. Though. He's out. He's dark out. horse, dark yeah. horse put out a statement saying that they believe Shauna Gore. I actually have it pulled up here somewhere. Let me, Oh, he's prepared. Y'all hold up. Uh, let me double check here. I'm, uh, John Lee Reynolds has a serious question. Uh, should accusations of misconduct be enough to be fired? Or are they moving too fast and innocent people getting caught up in the churn? Uh, I, it, if it was one person, maybe. If it was one person coming out and saying this dude did this stuff, you know, maybe you have a talk with your with your employer. Well, yeah, and, it's it's and like it's, a case he, by case scenario. Day. Yeah, but in just about all of these cases, I'm pretty sure all of them. There's it's multiple been, people coming out. And yeah, saying it's stories. been one person coming out, and then somebody else coming out and say, "Oh yeah, and yeah, they're to me too." So, so we're so, we're seeing we're seeing a pattern. I mean, it's, it's like yeah. the Charles Brownstein. We have people asking that the uh, the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund uh, remove their NDAs and cut so they can come forward with their stories about yeah. Charles. And, um, uh, but, I mean, and then you say, "quote unquote" innocent people. Okay, now. Let's say that I get pulled over by a police officer and my job doesn't like the fact that I got in trouble for something. And then, I don't know, they fire me for a DUI. And let's say six months later, I beat the DUI case. My, I can't do anything to my job. It doesn't yeah. matter. They can just fire you for whatever. That's right so, to work. There's two, one of two things that are going on. Either these people are telling the truth, these women are telling the truth, and bad, terrible shit is happening, or there's a concerted conspiracy going on where women behind the scenes are DMing each other and saying, this is what we're going to do, and this is what we're, how we're going to do it, and that just seems stupid to yeah, me. Yeah, because nobody can keep a secret that yeah. big long. There would always be somebody like breaking their silence on that. So it has exactly. to be a pattern of behavior. Yeah. yeah done by oh, these guys yeah william asked a question so after 14 years she finally had enough uh i mean obviously well, she I'm probably not sure had a, enough of it when it she probably had enough of it when it first started happen when it first happened it's just that now we're in a, an environment culturally where she feels comfortable to come out and say it yeah my thing you know about women that, yeah, exactly. women in all different kinds of fields are coming out now and sharing their stories yeah, so and and John Lee brings up the point I had. He lives in Missouri. They're an at-will state, so he understands what I mean. Employees can just you know do whatever they want. That employer employers can just fire you for whatever. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you're at an at-work state, as they call it. If you have a contract with your employer as just a contracted employee, as most of these editors and creators are, usually they have clauses in them where they can fire you for whatever, and it doesn't matter. 
Um, but yeah, after 14 years, okay, let's just say this 14 years ago, what would she have had to do if she had a complaint against the creator? Like I said, these are contract employees. What she can do is she can go to all of these publishers and she can say, this is what happened to me and tell her story four or five different times. And it's not like this stuff just started. I'm sure that did happen. I'm sure victims did go to employers and say, this is what happened. And they didn't care because what are they going to do? It's word for word, you know, his word against my word or whatever, his, you know, he said, she said, and they're benefiting off of that. So it's just easy for them to turn the other cheek, not to say that they didn't care, but it's impossible for them to take responsibility because they don't have anything to risk. There's nothing to lose. But now, because people can come out on social media and say things, and then other people can chime in and say, oh, man, you know what? I had the same experience with that person. And that's just – it's not really the anonymity of it all. It's the having a megaphone where you're telling it to the world instead of just going in front of the HR department head or whatever and saying it to them. And I'm, just, I'm not sure because, again, we don't know the state of mind. We don't know the state of affairs. We don't know the chain of events that led to any of this. I'm basically speaking in generalities. But, I mean, obviously there's something going on. And I think we touched on it last week. Even if these guys, you know, who were fired or whatever, let go of their contracts. This is a new age we live in. They can go to Kickstarter. They can do their own projects. They can get them funded directly from the fans who still want to support them. So there's still an avenue for that. So yeah, I don't but know, also, I don't but know. also if they start, it seems like it doesn't hurt. There are going to be people that are going to come out of the woodwork and sabotage their Kickstarters too. And you can't really sabotage a Kickstarter. If you're a big name, like Jason Latour, if people want a Jason Latour book, if they know these people, Warren Ellis, like we talked about last week, yeah. if he does a Kickstarter, it's going to, it's going to succeed no matter He'll what. He'll probably happens. do well. Yeah. Exactly. But there so, there are there are players out there that will try yeah. to sabotage. I mean, Evan Ben Striver has people that basically detract from him when he starts a Kickstarter or he makes even a post on social media, they come out of the woodwork. Well, I how mean, do they do that? How do they sabotage a Kickstarter? What is the mechanic there? They would probably tell people that this guy's got a Kickstarter and try to do your best to prevent him from, you know, reaching his goal. I mean, I don't how think do they do that though. They have social that's media how, presence. It sounds like too. really hard and it takes a lot of effort on their part. Well, I mean, I, I've seen one example, and I'm not going to name names, but I've seen one example of somebody sabotaging a Kickstarter. Well, it's not sabotaging I mean, if I'm, I just I'm sure go out there possible. and say, hey, don't hit this dude's uh, Kickstarter up because he's a jerk. That doesn't really seem like sabotage, sabotage to me. That's me stating my opinion about a guy. But if, it's, if they're trying to raise money for a book and this person and a detractor comes out and has a large enough following, they can they – can, generate enough negative publicity against the kickstarter that it doesn't succeed i've seen it happen one time well i i don't know i'm just saying there's still an avenue for that yeah yeah trolls can only do so much thanks adam we love your theme song thanks for letting me steal it all right more news let's let's get the hell off of this terrible nonsense oh man i had like a couple more names to name oh did you have more names we'll get back to those next week that add to the list <laughs> add to the list all right all right, now let's see. We got. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, his cue cards fell again. Well, you, oh, I have most most of my notes are all the stuff about the the sexual harassment allegations. Oh, it's so tiring. <laughs> oh, I hate man. it. Oh man, and we, we, we just these went these past people. that. Yes, we're we done did. with that. Move it. All right, all right. So let's let's go ahead and just let's go ahead and go to the eye watch. Michael Keaton will reprise the role of Batman. Old people Batman. rejoice. 1989, y'all. Woo! Woo Which, okay, so what we have is essentially we're going to have... You don't know what we're going to have. We're having a... Uh, we're going to have a Flashpoint. I, I, did, I thought well, Ezra Miller... That. That's the name of the movie. I know. know I thought Ezra Miller was canceled. He body slammed like know. a fan or something. Undertaker <laughs> is not really retired. He will never yeah, really Yeah, that's retire. a work, bro. That's a that work. is a work. That is a work. <laughs> ah. But anyway, uh, what, were we, what were we talking about, Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton will be reprising Oh, yeah, you thought role. Ezra was canceled. I think yeah. that was all staged. You're talking about I, that video where he punched or choked the lady? He, like, choke slammed that, wom that I think woman that was at the bar? Staged. I think that was Is staged. Is he really? 
Uh, the, no, I think it actually came out where the woman and him both said that it was staged. And there was some there was some weirdness with that, but dumb. the last well, I Edward heard, it was weird as hell. That's fine. That's why I like him. Have you seen like it? Have you seen like how like an interview with him here lately where he like his hair is really weird? Yeah, he looks like he looks like one of them singers He's from uh, Little Big. <laughs> he always person. wears coats that are way too big for him. I that love he does. Oh, he's no Adam West. No. He's no Adam West. Back in my day, my Batman had a pot belly. Hey, we have computers now. If they can bring back Peter Cushing for Rogue One, oh, they can bring you back Adam oh, West. God. Listen to this dude. He wants him to CGI. He wants him to just Superman's use, just mustache. Use the- They'll just use clips from Family Guy to, to voice all <laughs> no, of his. No, right? no, get 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 uh, Seth MacFarlane to do Adam West. Uh, Seth MacFarlane no. does a really good Adam West impression. No, let's not. Let's not do that at all. Yeah, let's not do that. All right, the Michael Keaton. Thing. We have the technology. Um, what we need to do is not make the old characters cool again because we can't make the new characters cool. Right. Yeah. Nobody liked Batman. Everybody hates the Henry Cavill Superman. They love Henry Cavill as Superman, but they hate all of his freaking movies. Pretty uh, much. Yeah. Wonder Wonder Woman's he, cool. Get, That's how I feel. Aquaman somehow like a, is okay with everyone. Didn't, didn't Henry Cavill <laughs> is he coming back really as Superman? Uh, yeah, that's the rumor too that he's coming back as Superman. That's also a rumor. Hmm. All right, here's my thing, okay? Why would they let the cat out of the bag about Michael freaking Keaton? Before the this movie is even buzz. in pre-production. Buzz. Buzz. buzz, buzz, buzz. Why don't you, you know what the MCU doesn't do? They buzz. don't reveal well, they don't need. They don't spoilers. Need that. Even in the first Iron Man movie. they try, Dude, it was... I looked this up the other day. It was three days before the, the premiere of I, the first Iron Man movie that it leaked that Samuel L. Jackson was in the movie. Three days. They were trying to keep that tight. As a Nick Fury, well, it was, it was also a different landscape of movie. So, what are you then. saying? WB is so terrible that they need this buzz. Yes. Uh, well, that, but also like the hype machine for comic book movies wasn't the same back oh, sure, then as sure. it is now. Sure. Oh, so you're saying the train's moving so fast that they need to have. Well, now, like yes, that. but also they've just been doing a brawl, much shittier job than Marvel, so they do the extra boost to, you know, help well, them. DC's always been playing catch-up to Marvel when it comes to the cinematic universe. I, I mean, anything they do that gives them an edge is something they'll take. I don't get exactly. it. Exactly. I don't get it. I, I'm, I am okay with bringing back old characters. Okay, the uh, uh the CW, this. the CW Arrowverse, it does that and it does it very, very well. Or has they did, they they did that when well. they had the crisis event where they brought back like you know, Burt everybody, and stuff. they brought everybody that was rad, Kevin dude. Conroy. That was, yeah, dude, they brought in Smallville's Tom Welling character, you know, anyway. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you need to show your hand, okay? I don't think you need to show your hand. Well, they showed their hand when they named the movie Flash. And well, when course. you name the movie Flashpoint, right. well, the biggest question here. is, is who is going to be Flashpoint Batman? No, no, no. And he's so not they, gonna be Flashpoint it. Batman. He's not gonna be Thomas Wayne. The rumor is well, he's gonna, gonna be, be he's gonna be a Wayne. flashpoint version of Batman. But the might not flashpoint be the, Batman is they Thomas should, freaking Wayne. I know. They 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 should get Henry or uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan or whatever. Of his course name. they should. He's already played the dad in the most yeah. recent movie. Thomas. Thomas Wayne. But, okay. The I reason know. I think Flashpoint is a good idea is I because... I think a terrible idea. Because it's them admitting, no, our universe is screwed up, and we know we can <laughs> fix it with one movie. And they can. I honestly believe that they can fix the entire Warner Brothers DC superhero universe. How can they do that? With the Flashpoint movie? Because they can, at the end of it, it can be whatever they want it to be. They can come out here. Yeah, and but, but, but what can anything. they change it to Dude, that will fix it? I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to go straight from Flashpoint into Rebirth, and then it's going to go to Doomsday no, Clock. Sure. 
and there's going to be villains <laughs> here. We're going to have another three villain movies. And honestly, I think that's what they should do. They should do more standalone villain movies. They should just do more standalone more movies overall. Yeah, I think yeah. all of their standalone yeah. movies have been doing much, much better, better than even Joker. I really like Joker. Connected. Yeah, Joker for, was a really good movie. Joker I mean, was really good. Shazam for what it was was Shazam good. was fantastic. It, it was Shazam. a little kids movie. It was a lot of fun. But if it, if it, it came out when I was like ten, it'd probably be my favorite movie. Yes, Shazam would be my favorite freaking hero if I was ten and that movie came out without a doubt. Um, let's see what they got going on in chat. Uh, any publicity is good publicity, I, I guess. Uh, Flashpoint is preferred for rebooting the universe. That's exactly what they're hoping for. I agree. Yeah, thanks, Sean. They're rebooting the universe. Um, but Adam's right. What are they going to have when they come out the other side? I mean, you still that, have to I'm follow. Just tired. I'm just tired of the Flashpoint story. How many iterations of this damn story are we gonna are we gonna have to go through? And the original wasn't even that damn good to begin with. Like, and they and they 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 implied they've done it twice in the animated stuff that is Justice League animated. Yeah, it's true. it's true. I don't know, man. And you know what, the Ezra thing—they could fix that too, man. They could just use Wally. Just use Wally. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Do you have any more news? I had only those three news stories because that's what we had picked. You had some stuff, right? Did I? Uh, I don't know. We can talk about Josh look- Frank. Oh, let me do the news. Okay. I gotta, I gotta do that. There, I'll, hold on. You can't do that for every story. Oh. This just in. Josh Trank is still trolling people. Uh, <laughs> Josh Trank is the director. Youngest director of a number one movie ever. Just FYI. Because Fantastic Four was number one. Because it's so easy to do. But he like left social media. Because he keeps getting punked out by people. Bullied by people. Leave Josh Trank alone. Okay. Yeah, don't he bully. Bullying his, is wrong. He knows Just because his he made a shitty sucks. movie doesn't mean you can bully him. Yeah. He knows his movie. He knows his terrible. movie sucked. Yeah. He had a vision. Okay. He had a vision. I understand other people didn't see that vision. I've watched that movie again recently, and yeah, it's terrible. It's horrible, man. I'll take it's your horrible. word for it because I haven't seen it. It's on Disney Plus now. FYI. Oh boy. Yeah. But it's really bad. But he left Instagram, and when he did, he, like, talked a lot of smack on people. And are you, what, are you opening a candy bar? Uh, no. What are you doing? I was... you, oh, you got Christmas presents? Yes, I have Christmas presents. Uh, but he's just he was harassed online for his movie. And that's not cool, y'all. No, he's eating chips or something. Leave Josh Trank alone, please. Okay? Please leave Josh Trank alone. Leave him alone. He didn't... He made a bad movie. That's all he did. That's all he did. <laughs> I don't know why I'm offending this guy. I don't even really give a shit. You could be like really you could be like Bill Cosby and buy all copies of Blitter Ten. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think, think anybody should be like Bill Cosby. Yeah, I don't think that happens. No, not anymore. But <laughs> all right, let's talk comics. Well, I think I got this. Oh, it's so dramatic. Dramatic. I mean, it's dramatic. Top three. That's where we talk about our top three comics of the week. Adam's going first because he had to force three onto us. So go first. Force three onto you? You had to force onto me. Well, kind of. I want to hear what your number three is because it's like, man, I didn't have a top three. I, I was lucky to have a top two. Everything I read this week was garbage. <laughs> Pretty much, was, man. man. Um, uh, so I guess my top dude. three is Batman number 93. Ugh. The end of Tinian's first arc on Batman. Uh, we finally get the reveal of who the designer is. And it's the Joker. Kinda. It's kinda, yeah. Kinda. The Joker used toxins to reanimate a corpse. And that's the designer. Man, that's the dumbest, dumbest thing ever. It's so dumb. It's bad. It's dumb, dude. It's not good. It's no. so bad. There you go. Guillaume March still doing the art on there? Uh, I don't. Uh, I think he is, but I think he's being hit out by some other guy. You know, because that. of the double shipping of yeah, DC, they always have people helping out doing tag team on the art. Can I comment on that for a second? 
Oh, like, please go know, right ahead. When you do that, when these publishers have these editorial quotas where these deadlines force people, artists, to rush, you get bad work, and then you have to have fill in artists. You know, what you're saying to those creators is, you know, we don't appreciate your art enough to put this book out in a time where uh, you are truly allowed to flourish in your chosen profession. Okay. And not only that, your art is so unimportant to us that we think we can just get another guy to come in for an issue or two, too. Not even for an issue or two, for like, for like four pages. And also pages. that guy who's doing the four pages or the issue or two, you're just good enough to write to draw this book for a few issues until the main guy gets back. Basically. Shut the hell up, man. I'm okay with double shipping, but they need to do better. Okay, what was it that Wonder Woman was double shipping? They were telling two stories, the odds and the evens. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, one was, that, one was that present, didn't one was pan out too well. Yeah, it, it didn't, didn't pan didn't out, out, but it was still good. better. You know, it still respected the work. And that's you, what you, I'm going to bitch about. Okay. Bitch over. Moving, on to, David. Moving on to David. But, but, yeah, oh, man, that was your so, number three, right, Adam? Yeah, that was my number three. That sucked. <laughs> Elvis Pose. David, um, what was your number three book of the week? Um, I actually was really pleased with Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 105. Oh, I did not read that. Ooh. I did read Janika number three, but I did not read TMNT yet. Uh, I've been meaning to get into that. Dude, uh, it's 105 issues. It's rough. I know. It's But it's good. It's good. It's like getting into Transformers back when... I don't even tell people oof. to do that anymore. But pretty I much uh, life is kind of coming to a sense of normality in uh, Mutant Town. And the Turtles have opened up a dojo and are, are it's uh, weird, training man. There's a the Mutant Hippo be... doing karate. Yeah, there's a mutant hippo doing karate. There's like a hyena in there. There's a rabbit or two. There's several weasels. There's an there's albino turtle. Weasel. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. It is. It is. But I did see those <laughs> screenshots because it's funny. It, it, but uh, we have uh, an interesting uh, little twist at the end. Um, I'm the the albino girl turtle, the little child turtle, mm -hmm. uh, Lita, uh, apparently comes back from the future. <gasps> An bum, adult bum, version bum. of Great her. Scott. Dun, dun, dun. She's Trunks. Marty, it's your kids, Marty. It's your kids, Marty. It's a throwback. <laughs> cool. So Good that choice. was my number number three pick. I wish I had have read that. Mm -hmm. All right, my I'm doing mine. Yeah, sorry, having technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped Man, your when do you not have technical difficulties? <laughs> My number three pick, uh, the Green Lantern 80th Anniversary 100-page Super Spectacular number one. Yes. Oh, really? You got that? Say what you will. Yeah. I Even think I didn't get that. It was a super light week, bro. There was like and you're no the guy who picks up out all the, all the fake anniversary issues that are overpriced. I just wanted to help out a little bit, but this was not bad, dude. I bet it was. The price is hard to excuse, okay? It's hard it's to give them. Bucks. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of gems in here. Jeff Johns and Ivan Rice had a poignant and funny Hal Jordan story where Hal thinks he crashed on a planet and his rings run out of power, like an alien planet and his rings run out of power. And he's like, oh no. So he does like a last will and testament. He does one to Batman and he does one to, uh, what's her name? Whatever. But it ends up that he's actually on earth. <laughs> he's like so he's just an idiot. Well, he's, he's like, always an idiot. That's typical. How? That's that's what, whatever. <laughs> he's like on Gilligan's uh, Island. <laughs> yeah, Denny O'Neill and Mike Grell had a story in here, which was awesome. It was like throwback to Green Arrow, uh, 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 Green Lantern. It was nice. My, my fave, Lord, the junkie. Yeah, my <laughs> my fave was uh, a story called The Voice by Mariko Tamaki and Mirko Andolfa, starring Jessica Ooh. Cruz. Yeah, I love Jessica Cruz so much, and th this is about her dealing with a specific angle to people's anxiety, where they just start a line of thinking, and it just goes on and goes on un until it's damaging. And I suffer from that, as you know, from time to time, and especially that sort of thing specifically. And not to the extent that that Jessica suffers from it in this story, but I could definitely see the parallels there, and it was really, really cool. It was really fun. There you go. That's awesome. my three. 
Adam has a number two book. Do we need to do this every time? No. Uh, well, that's up to you, man. You're the one who's controlling this. Shut up. Shut up I didn't know if you got a top two. You should have at least one. If you're going to do that, you should at least have a top two, top one graphic instead Fine. of it being top three. Adam, number two. Go ahead. <laughs> Fucking criticize uh, my number two is Aquaman number 60. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, by uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick has been writing it now. She's taking it over. And I really like the direction she's taking it. You know, she's giving Aquaman back his family. He has a kid again named Andy, little girl. Was, this the, was she doing the dolphin run? Who was writing that? Was that Sedgwick drawing that? Sedgwick was drawing Cedric it. Uh, yeah, yeah it, Cedric at, was. And it started that, yeah. Okay. Uh, but Dolphin is back again. Uh, Ocean Master is back, and he's starting up his own underwater city, the city of Dagon, where Dolphin is actually at, because it has all the uh, left out, you know, low people who are like kind of more mutated fish like living like, there. I want to start my own Atlantis. How, Basically, how do you, Aquaman? How is that spelled? Dagon, how is it spelled? Uh, just like the uh, HP Lovecraft. Okay, so, yeah. so that's oh, that's not nice. that's not telegraphing anything, right? No, right. it's not. They're right. definitely gearing up for a big war. Uh, but uh, Aquaman's daughter has been kidnapped by somebody, and this issue is basically... Yeah, baby. Already. Already. Oh, already. Oh gosh, I know. it's baby. I know. I know. Aquaman's baby's like Liam Neeson's kid in freaking Taken. This kid cannot stay out of trouble. Doesn't well, this issue is him getting the baby back. Yeah. But, it, you know, I, I really like the comic so skills. far. Right? It, they've introduced <laughs> a nice new cast of characters. I finally... Uh, enjoy that they're actually doing something with uh, Aqua Lad. Oh, cool. uh, Jackson. Yeah, they're, he's been around for years, but they haven't really done much with him in the actual comic universe. He's really yeah. just been found in Young Justice and the comic or in the TV show. Yeah. yeah. Well, well. All right, we're not going to do it. So, is it your turn, David, or is it my turn? It's my turn. Number two book. Number two book from Image Comics. It's that Texas Blood number one. That's my number two book too. Ooh, yeah, Ooh your... double daily double. <laughs> yeah, I love it when we have the daily double. Cool, dude. Talk about this book. Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips doing the art. Jacob Phillips is actually the color artist on Criminal. Yeah, which everybody loves. Criminal. So go um, ahead, David. You, you lead it. Uh, this is okay. okay. This pretty much felt like Tommy Lee Jones's part, part, and old men or No Country for Old Men, mm -hmm. without like you know the, the killer guy and all that being around. Sure. It's just this. That's what it kind of felt like up until a point. Sure. The, the art is the art is beautiful. The story is uh, right now like you know this this uh, Texas sheriff is turning seventy. And it's his birthday. It's his birthday, and it's like it, we're going through kind of a regular day uh, until until well, about it is regular, stop. but but he's also sort of reflecting yeah. on his life a bit at certain points. Yeah, the, there's a there's a bit of a reflection that I'm kind of thinking like this is not going to be like you know uh, there's a supernatural element to it. Oh, geez, you always think there's a supernatural element to stuff. I I don't know the the the, the shotgun ghost is kind of got me thinking. I don't think I think that's just him thinking, him dreaming. He just likes ghosts, man. Dude, <laughs> but there's there any chance for a Ghostbusters crossover? David is over it. Uh, he's all on it. I know. I am. <laughs> Uh, dude, there is great character development in this, really cool pacing, great art, like you said. But there is a story aspect here revolving around a casserole dish yeah. that makes this something special. And you know it. As soon as they get to the panel where you see the casserole dish, you're like, okay, this is something special. And I know that sounds so stupid. That's a big twist because the whole day, so the great. whole the whole day was normal until the casserole dish. But it, the casserole dish was still all part of the normality of the yeah. day. It, and the, the casserole dish sort of acts as this pivot point where that's how you kind of meet a lot of the characters. It's weird, dude. It's so well done, though. I had a really good time with this. Book. I really enjoyed this book. Yeah, I'm gonna have that's to get it. you a copy of this, Adam. I'm gonna definitely okay. put it on my pool it's list. Awesome. Send it yeah. straight over to me. It's great. Awesome. Well, that was my number two. Open. 
So we're off to the number one book for Adam. What's your number one book this week? Justice League Dark, number 23. Wow. See, I'm not reading that either. I need we're, to going for a DC, we're going Dude, for a DC hat yeah. trick, aren't we? That's what you're going to get most weeks with, probably. <laughs> um, until the X-Men but, come back, damn it. Yeah, until the X-Men come back. Um so, dude, you really should be getting on this book because this is pretty much the spiritual successor to Tinian's um, uh, Detective Comics run. It, it's hit that, but it's with just mystical characters. Um, this whole story has just been one, this whole arc has just been one big long story, the whole volume, I mean. And uh, right now, uh, Swamp Thing has been... Uh, He's been taken off the board, basically. He's been captured, and he got sent back into the uh, into the dark, the the rot. And oh, no. everybody is going to try and save him. And since Swamp Thing is gone, all of the uh, Eleanor stuff is out of whack, and all the parliaments are going crazy. So Doc Fade is going, and he's calling a parliament for all of the parliaments of life. And he's trying to convince them that they need to start working together for order. So they can stop the upside down man and all of the oh evil that's eating magic and stuff. While also uh, Zantana and John Constantine doing some mean dealing and dealing are dealing with the rot and Anton Arcane trying to get Swamp Thing back that's so he can rad. actually take control of everything. It's 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 been a great book. It's it's probably my favorite book going right now. It's it was so hard for me, dude. There were three Justice League books that came out at the same time. I know, and dude. The first one, the main Justice League book, was just so It was good great. at the time. Oh, my God. But now it's trash. Now, now I, it's I total trash. trash. But I hear good things about the Odyssey book and the Dark book. Mm -hmm. I hear good things about both of them. Like Jessica Cruz, I hear she is the king, queen shit in that in that Odyssey. Oh, book. in that Odyssey book, she is fantastic. She, she is she's one of my favorite. staring down Dark Side. Yeah, and she's one of. See, damn it, I'm gonna have to just go back and get the trades. I'm gonna have to. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. That was uh, Adam's number two book of the week. Just the number one book. Oh, that's the number one book. Damn. At, or David, your number one book this week. Go for number it. Number one book is Bleed 'Em Dry. Number one. Oh, see, I did not read this one either. Ah. Well, I did review or edit a review for this. It's like uh, vampires, right? Uh, it's kind of like if you had like Judge Dredd meets vampires. Sounds awesome. People are. It's I. Sounds you know, my alley. the year is thirty three thirty three, and people are living in a mega city <laughs> called Asylum, and vampires are real, but they're part of no, society. It's like it's exactly Judge Dredd yeah, so versus Vampire. Precisely Judge Dredd. We just threw Vampire. <laughs> in it. Um, and the and Detective uh, Harper Holloway has been assigned to a case because somebody's killed a vampire. And it's got that it's got that detective trope. Of like they go talk to the chief, and the chief's like, "The mayor's on my ass. Why we got a vampire dying? You know what's this gonna look like in the, the news? I'm gonna own your badge, Sergeant." Arr! And she has like a, she has like a vampire. Yeah. She has like a vampire uh, partner. It's there's a lot there, and there's an interesting twist at the end. The that kind of sets up for the next issue. Oh, yeah. oh the art was great. Uh, Dyke Ruan doing the art was okay. terrific. It was very dark, uh, well paced. I'm gonna have to check that out too. Damn, had to be um, had. Had to be very graphic at sometimes, but it was it worked. Well, it's vampires and, and Judge Dread. It's vampires be and graphic. Dredd. Some at yeah, some but it was it was um it was a little bit different than what I expected it to be. You know, I'm not awesome. Well, yeah. like awesome. My number one book of the week, Year Zero, number two, AWA Studios, writing uh written by Ben Percy, art by Ramon Rosanos. This is like um, a zombie apocalypse story, but it's a real slow burn, and it's got this uniqueness to it in the way it tells the story. It follows four individuals from the very beginning of the zombie outbreak. Uh, a Japanese assassin who's, whose plans with his old lady are just ruined by the, the outbreak. Oh, yeah. An Afghani woman who is like a hero in her own right, helping out the military. It's weird. A young street urchin in Mexico who has the grace of God. That's wonderful too. And my fave 
a conspiracy nerd in Minnesota who just so happened to guess right. So it's <laughs> it's it's weird, dude. And that's the best way for me to describe all of them because they're all sort of just living their lives, and this thing just sort of happens. Oh, um, yeah, and they're... we. We spend equal time with each of them. Um, each story on its own, crazy enough, would just kind of be okay. But knowing that we're getting these four different stories, each compelling in its own right, it gives this series a weird depth that it's just kind of hard to describe. You know what I mean? David, are you reading this? Yes. Actually, um, I thought the the street urchin story was it's got an interesting twist to it. Uh They've but, all got interesting but twists. But the this one had a, one of the more interesting twists. You know, you had the conspiracy yeah. theory nut. He's got the shortwave radio, and he's trying to reach out to people. Yeah. Uh, but the, the street urchin, basically, the person that saves him from the zombie is the person that killed his parents. So It's weird. But, it's, I it's, mean, it's really good. But we're not sure if that's actually the guy who killed his parents. Well, the kid says that the person that saved my life is the person who murdered that my parents. That kid's been wrong this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that he says, the pictures that they're showing are like the complete they're opposite wrong. of what's they're actually wrong. going on. And that's what I mean by he's got the grace of God. It's sort of like he's got this childlike innocence that the things that he thinks he's seeing that as the grace of God, as these blessings, these miracles, are him just like getting lucky. It's weird, dude, but it's so well told, man. And it's a unique take on the a whole zombie apocalypse thing, you know, telling these four stories. I don't know if they're ever going to meet up. I don't know and, about that. And they don't really have to. They don't really have to. Um, they're too far that? spread out for a zombie apocalypse to come together and be like, right? by our powers combined, we exactly. are Captain <laughs> Apocalypse. What is that zombie book by uh, Brooks um, where they had a movie about it? World War Z. Yeah, it was called World War okay. Z, but it wasn't anything like the movie with what's no. Name. The Brad book no, was kind of like a they, guy goes around and gets interview and interviews a bunch of people who survived the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, and it's all these stories from their point of view. Yeah, so it's, it's, like it's re- the the book is more of an anthology. Exactly, but that's that's what this reminds me of in a way. You know, we're seeing four different points of view in the same zombie outbreak apocalypse sort of thing it's it's ingenious it's overly brilliant and i love it it might be my favorite thing at awa and the resistance is so damn good Uh, what's up with them man not enough people are talking about about awa at all all. uh it it could be because of the covid situation oh everything's covid's fault Hey, Pop. well most of it is it doesn't help (laughs) you just running around like man i'm just a bat virus trying to you know Make everybody Batman. That's, those are our top three. Thanks, everybody. If you and I should ask this earlier. If you're in the chat, there ain't nobody left in the chat. And we chased and we, them off. We wore them out. Uh, but yeah, what's your top three? Let us know in a comment if you're listening to this on the replay. But that's it. That's our show. We did it again. Woo-hoo! Man, my my hot water heater did not blow up, but it does. Damn keep it. Shutting off. It does keep shutting off, and it's very upsetting. I have to call my stupid guy anyway that's my life you might have a leak shut me why you why would you say that <laughs> that's like someone like coming because you might it's like someone coming and saying oh man my stomach really hurts and you're saying man you might have cancer <laughs> it's basically <laughs> the same thing it's basically the same thing it's, it's not it's close if my shit's leaking, you know how much stuff gets destroyed? You know how much work I've got to do to make sure that I control the water? Get a curb key and just shut the water off at the, at this the line. Guy. That's, that's why you shower. don't put a hot water heater in your comic book room. You're not wrong. I'm, my, not, my, saying, I'm not saying you have a, hot, a leak in your hot water heater. I'm saying you might have a leak in your water line. <laughs> well, that's it for this geeking comic. <laughs> No, I don't think it's anything that makes <laughs> Yeah, um, you better end the show before he wishes more ill will to you. Right? I think it's an electrical electrical problem. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, I want to thank everybody for hanging out, stopping by, listening. Um, if you like the show, I mean, share us around. Let everybody know. Join the Outright Geekery. I don't know. Stuff. It did take a weird turn, Adam. You're right. Adam have seen it in the chat. It took a weird turn. 
Anyway, I need you to come by and fix my, my water heater, Adam. Anyway, no, I don't. <laughs> Stay away. I don't want COVID. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So find us at OutrightGeekery.com, uh, Facebook.com slash Uh We do all kinds of live stuff. We got OK Boomer going weekly, uh, reviewing old comics. Uh, inter- Creator's Corner with Big Willie. He's interviewing all kinds of artists and writers. Dude's whack. He's just all the time with the interviews. Um, what else we got going on, man? We got the wrestling council once a week. They're talking all wrestling. That's great. Uh, the comic book bull I mean, wrestling's big because Undertaker retired. It's not a work. Uh, <laughs> we'll never we got, retire. We got the comic book bullies with uh, Eli and Leroy. Then I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that the comic book bullies, their episode this week uh, was, you know, Chef Kiss. Mwah. Mwah. If you had a camera, we'd see it. Mwah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really love the bullies. Really proud of that show. We also got the geek savs. They've been taking a little time off. Uh, who knows why? You know how it goes. This show took like six months off. Whatever. Uh, but that's Eli and the native nerds uh, talking about geek stuff from a, a Native American slant. I love that a lot too. What else we got, man? We got uh, get valiant. They just interviewed Dad uh, Dan Abnett yesterday. I did see that. That's that awesome. Was great dude. Dan Abnett is just a huge nerd, and I freaking love it. He's just such a great guy. Um, check them out, and also uh, Riddle of Steel. That's a Conan podcast that we do. I don't even think I've ever heard an episode of that. I should really. We should try to find it. <laughs> yeah, I should try to really get into involved a lot more in the stuff that's going on 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 my website. Your, anyway, your, that website your, your is your network. <laughs> outrightgeekery.com and you can go to outrightgeekery.com slash podcast for all those or just hang out on our social media what is the social media for this show david it is at tgic pod on twitter Ooh, that's all and you got. there's Ooh, something else glitter. in the works but i'm not prepared to talk about that yet Ooh, secret mystery <laughs> secret that's a- secret means you have to come to the next episode you know <laughs> yeah cliffhanger do, do, do. Uh, most of all, I want to thank you guys, aka David and Adam Norrell, for hanging out and, and doing what we do. Yes, thanks for putting oh, yeah. up with my nonsense. You're welcome. Uh, but we're going to do it again next week. Same geek time, same geek channel. Should we continue to do the same geek time, same geek channel? It sort of leaves Adam out. He just. It's fine. He's like, it's we, fine. We, we I'll can, stay out. Adam can do an outro. We can all do an individual We outro. all do our own outro. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye. 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 Uh, Take care.